This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, keeping you informed about the happenings in Annapolis and the area. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and of course, local weather. The Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Black Friday, November 23rd, 2018. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving, and I do know that 150 of you had a good one at Federal House. And this is just such a great tradition that was started by co-owner Jeremy Black. This year, in what's supposed to be an annual tradition, Federal House decided they wanted to feed the community, feed those that were homeless, feed those that were less fortunate. And they got about 300 pounds of food prepared. A lot of it was donated by Cisco Food Service of Maryland. And they put together a feast for the eyes. 150 people filtered in through the door. They had turkey. They had green bean casserole, mashed potatoes, plenty of desserts all put together by a team of volunteers. They were cooking throughout the night, and Black has said that he wanted to do this just to make sure that his children and everybody knows that there are people in need in our community, and we all need to do something to lend a hand. Good job, Federal House. There was a horrific, tragic incident Wednesday evening at BWI in the heart of the Thanksgiving rush. At about 7.35 p.m., police received word of a, quote, medical emergency on the upper level concourse. And this was between the JetBlue and the American Airlines counter. From a source that was on the scene, a male victim apparently took his own life right in the concourse. Police have not released the age or the name of the victim, but they did emphasize that there was no threat to travelers or to public safety. The concourse was closed for several hours while the investigation ensued and the area was cleaned up. The University of Maryland is saying that the student has recently passed away from an illness associated with adenovirus. Dr. David McBride, who's the director of the University Health Center, said that they learned of an isolated case of adenovirus on November 1st and have been working with state and county health officials to monitor the cases. Since then, they've found five additional cases. And on Monday, they learned that a specimen that was sent to the CDC tested positive for adenovirus number seven, which is a more potent strain. This all comes after Olivia Paragol, 18, who was a freshman from Howard County, passed away on Sunday. She lived in Elkton Hall, which is a dorm where the mold was discovered earlier this year. And the university has said that there is no consistent connection ex- between the mold exposure and the incidence of adenovirus. As far as the adenovirus goes, there is no specific treatment for the infected individual, nor is there any vaccine yet available. Eleven children recently died in New Jersey after an adenovirus outbreak at a health center. This is nothing to mess around with. It is spread through close personal contact, through coughs and sneezes, or by touching something with a virus on it and touching your mouth or nose or eyes. The best precaution right now is to make sure you are washing your hands. A volunteer firefighter is being held without bail after allegedly planting explosive devices that detonated behind a Dundalk Elementary School last weekend. Baltimore police responded to the Berkshire Elementary School just after midnight on Saturday, November 17th. They found a small package explosion on a bench and a video that showed someone putting a box on the bench, igniting it and running away. Similar calls were received late Monday night for the same school for possible shots fired. Officers did locate Anthony Dale Reed, who was in the area. They did question him and release him, but later bomb technicians, officers, and arson detectives positively identified the man on the surveillance video as Reed. Now, Reed has been identified as a volunteer firefighter at the North Point Edgemere Volunteer Fire Department. And it is very common to find out that in arson cases and whatnot, that firefighters are indeed the culprit behind them. What happens when you get a 75-year-old, a 74-year-old, a 71-year-old, and a 77-year-old and put them together? Well, if they're the Rolling Stones, they come to FedEx Field on May 31st. Yes, the Rolling Stones are hitting the road once again, bringing their greatest hits to Landover, Maryland. It's the No Filter Tour. And in addition to Landover, they are hitting 12 other cities across America. Tickets will go on sale November 30th at 10 a.m. But if you are an American Express cardholder, you can get them a little bit early from 10 a.m. on November 28th to 10 p.m. on November 29th before they go on sale. That's 297 years of combined rock and roll right there coming to FedEx Field in May. 
If you are out shopping for Black Friday, the Baltimore Orioles has a serious sale in store for what they're calling Orange and Black Friday. Shoppers who visit the team store at Camden Yards from 10 to 5 will get a 50% discount on all purchases. Online Friday through Cyber Monday, online shoppers can also get Oriole gift certificates with a 30% bonus. So if you buy a significant other, parent, child, a $100 gift certificate, you'll get $130 instead. Sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Also, remember that Rams Head on stage is surcharge free through midnight tonight, although I hear that it may be through the morning, but no guarantees on that. All Rams Head on stage shows, including the ones at Maryland Hall in St. John's, and if you're traveling, the ones at the Key West Theater are all surcharge free today for Black Friday. So if you've got the itch for entertainment, head on over to RamsHeadOnStage.com and buy your tickets to your heart's content. That is about it for the top news today. Please make sure you're checking out ionanapolis.net throughout the day because we do update it throughout the day. You want to make sure you recommend us to your friends and colleagues, and you want to make sure you're subscribed to us and give us a rating or a review if you can. Now you want to hang tight because we have George Young with DMV Weather. He's coming right up. And because it is Friday, we do have a list of things that you need to think about for the weekend. Hang tight. That's all coming up right now. It's the most important ring you'll ever have. It's the one that goes on the third finger, left hand. It's the engagement ring we design and create for a couple in love. It may not be the biggest diamond you'll ever own, or the most expensive. It might actually be quite modest, but there will never be a more important one. Look at what it's saying, and we'll say, forever. This is one of the delights that comes with doing what we do being part of all that here at Zachary's Jewelers. And with six designers on staff, there's nothing you can imagine that we cannot create. If you'd like to design your engagement ring with us, come to Zachary's. Zachary's, online at Zachary'sJewelers.com. More than a jewelry store, a jeweler. Going out? You need the most up-to-date local weather. Here's George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis with today's forecast. Hey everyone, this is George with DMV Weather, and here's your Ion Annapolis forecast for Friday, November 23rd. Yesterday was a cold one for the Thanksgiving holiday, and today won't be vastly different with cold temps in the upper teens to mid-20s out there now, with afternoon highs again only in the 30s, some 15 to 20 degrees below average for the date. But that'll change quickly tomorrow as the flow of air into the region comes from a more southerly direction, helping to warm temps up into the 50 to 55 degree range. But we'll have to get through a rainy day Saturday first with what could be one inch or more of rain, mostly in the p.m. hours before what should turn out to be a fairly nice day on Sunday with more 50s and a decent amount of sunshine. Beyond that, looking into next week, it'll be more 50s and maybe more rain in the a.m. hours on Monday before cooler air filters in. And again, highs are generally below average much of the week in the 40s. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Make it a great day out there and be sure to download our free app by searching for DCMDVA Weather from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store and follow us on Facebook or Twitter or on our website at DMVWeather.com so you can always stay weather informed. And if you're on our app or our website, be sure to check out our official winter outlook for the 2018-2019 winter season and also listen to a podcast we did with Eye on Annapolis that was posted on Eye on Annapolis, All Annapolis, and the Maryland Crabs yesterday in which we discuss our winter outlook and the factors behind it in a little detail with John Frenet. Here's to the teacher who spends her weekend helping children who need a little extra attention. To the soldier who missed the birth of his baby while serving overseas. To the EMT working full-time and taking night classes. To the police officers and firefighters working long hours away from their families to keep our families safe. Here's to you, our hometown heroes. I'm Alan Hyatt, chairman and president of Severn Bank, and we know there are many heroes among us. Men and women who serve without expecting anything in return which is why we're honored to offer our Hometown Heroes program to educators, law enforcement officers, firefighters, first responders, health care workers, and military personnel. Whether you're opening a checking account or buying a new home, we're here to give back to you. Learn more about our Hometown Heroes program at SeverinBank.com. Severn Bank, here with you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. 
Every weekend, there's something exciting going on in the Annapolis area. Be sure to visit iAnnapolis.net to sign up for a newsletter highlighting all the weekend events. Here are our top picks for this weekend. God, it's well, hey, it's the weekend. Let's get right into it. Currently going on now through the 2nd of January, it's Lights on the Bay. And this year, as it was last year, it is sponsored by the SPCA of Anne Arundel County, no longer the Anne Arundel Medical Center, but it is just as good, if not better. It's got two miles of lighted goodness as you drive through Sandy Point State Park. And the hours are 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. every single night. It'll cost you $15 a car, so pack as many people into that car as you can. Head on out to Lights on the Bay on Sandy Point Park. Sunday evening, it is the Grand Illumination in Annapolis. It gets underway at 5.30 p.m. You're going to have dancing, you're going to have Christmas carols, and of course, Santa arriving on most likely a public transit bus this year. And hopefully, Santa won't make a stop at one of the local pubs before his appearance like he did last year. The JCs are going to be on hand with hot chocolate. And you want to make sure that you get down there early because Zachary's always has the Chesapeake Ballet to entertain you with scenes from the Nutcracker. Now that gets underway at about 4 p.m. in advance of the Grand Illumination. And there's plenty of time to duck into the store to take some of the chill off, mix and mingle with some of the dancers. Zachary's usually has some, quote, holiday cheer available for you to drink. And if you play extra nice, I hear they've got some of the good stuff in the back room. Definitely check out Zachary's Jewelers and the Grand Illumination. All gets underway at 4 p.m. on Sunday. Saturday, tomorrow, it is Small Business Saturday. And I can't stress how important it is to support your locally owned small businesses. And I don't care if you're in West Annapolis, Maryland Avenue, Main Street, Severna Park, Odenton. Support your local businesses. It keeps the money right here in the community. These are our neighbors. These are our friends. And really, it's what makes the world go around when you do support local business. And Yelp actually just put out a study, not a study, but a list of the best places to shop locally. And in Maryland, if you up for a road trip, they say Frederick is rated as the number 14 place in the country to shop locally. So that's pretty cool. Also throughout the weekend, and sometimes people forget about this, but it is such a great thing that we have here in Annapolis. It's the Mitchell Gallery at St. John's College. It is open throughout the weekend. They don't close for the holidays. And right now they've got an exhibition on the art of kids' books. Think Maurice Sendak. Think Dr. Seuss a little bit. Uh, Really a fascinating exhibition that's going on through, I think, about the middle of January. But you're going to have to check that out. Check it out at Mitchell Gallery at St. John's. It is open. It is free to the public. And it is a great, great resource source that we have here in Annapolis, Maryland. And looking ahead to Tuesday at 6 p.m., the United States Naval Academy Alumni Association will be lighting the Christmas tree at Ogle Hall, which is right at the corner of, I'm going to take a stab at King George and College Avenue, maybe Prince George. I get those Georges all confused. Anyhow, it is the big brick building that's there. It used to be a gigantic Christmas tree until some storm took the top half off it. So it is now not quite so gigantic of a Christmas tree, but it is still impressive. And if you've ever come down King George Street, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They've been busy decorating it. You want to make sure that you're there. 6 p.m. They will have some entertainment. They will have some food. 6 p.m. on Tuesday at Ogle Hall, which is also called the Alumni Association building right there on the corner. That is about it for the weekend. And no matter what you do, please make sure you're doing it safely because we want to see you back here on Monday. Have a great weekend. Hello, I'm Jay Perman, president of the University of Maryland, Baltimore. We are proud to partner with the Office of County Executive Steve Hsu, the Department of Health and Leadership Anne Arundel, to educate doctors about how to stop heroin addiction before it starts. Go to aacounty.org slash heroin to learn more about how you can stop addiction. You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find even more information. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., keeping you informed with the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. And take a moment to listen to our other podcast, The Maryland Crabs, released every Thursday at noon.